One. Yay! Woo-hoo! The countdown was perfect. We're back. Yeah, motherfuckers. <laughs> For once, there isn't a delay between you clicking the button and Google Hang- Hangouts actually doing the same thing. Yeah, but I, I I I actually had the timing correct when I said three, two, one, and I was ready for the hey, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, I should we we should probably do an intro that's like da 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 da. Hey, hey, hey. No, <laughs> but that's too anime. No. All right, yo. This okay. Is know. <laughs> I know we're just like yay yo, <laughs> yay hey yo. Okay. Sorry. Oh wait, you know what we could do? Uh. Hip hop hooray! Hip hop hooray! <laughs> oh, hey, oh. oh my god! Do you remember the stiff leg? Just yeah. Just like, just, 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 I forgot what the move is called, but I remember. You know that anybody could do that move, though, right? For real. Anybody like your 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 old leg and grandpa be like at the wedding. It's like the, the tootsie roll. Anyone could do the tootsie roll. Yeah, that's what I loved about that old shit. Anybody could do it. And like when you sung the song, it the song worked without the beat, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. I'm going to get back to it. And welcome to the show. This is Mr. Savreed's Live, the live show. It's an audio only one, but. Don't let that get you down because we're talking about Patricia Briggs Alpha and Omega series, which are currently at four books with a new book coming out at 2018. And I forget the name. Sorry, <laughs> but there's a new one coming out. So we thought we would read the whole entire Mercy Thompson series. And that was me and Mr. Safu, myself being Mr. OP. And this beginning is messed up because I'm that excited. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Madame Vu. So this hooker keeps messing up my name. But you know, she's usually messing up her own name, which is hilarious. So. I messed up my name. I messed up your name. I messed up the worst part is OP is actually my actual name. It's O. But you mess it up. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I was watching this thing this list this week, and I was like, and I was trying to go over how many people die in um, the series. And all I kept doing is every time I would read somebody die, read somebody, you know, somebody's death, I'd go, rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> the book is going to be is called Burn Bright, and it's going to be out March 2018. Yes. Yes. Uh, weirdly, yes, yes. Uh, in this series, people die in this series. They die so more than in... Um, Mercy Thompson, which is the um, main series. So this is the Mercy Thompson universe overall. And then Alpha Omega series, which can stand alone. So I'm going to say this. Or work within. I actually like Alpha and Omega a little bit more than I like Mercy Thompson. Dun, dun, dun. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, I like the dynamics of Mercy. I, I like the di- dynamics of both the Mercy Thompson and the thing. I think it, there's a rare series in a rare universe where all the males work when they're love interests. Well, it's like, you know, I was actually kind of worried after, like, the second book that it was going to be one of those things where, where that chick couldn't like pee without him being there. But she, it sh- it's actually showing like growth. Even though she was one of those island girls, technically, you know, no friends, no family. <laughs> you know, she wasn't an island girl. She was beloved by almost everybody. At first. No, but think about it. She actually but she they- had one friend because she was being brutalized. Yeah, but they turned her into an island girl. What we normally get are island girls who are always island girls, but everybody loves them. But you know what I mean? Yet yeah, well, they have no friends. Well, they both of them need to grow socially, and you actually get to see them grow socially, and and that's what I like about it. Like they're both just a hot mess socially. But it kind of makes sense because he's the only wolf in existence born as a wolf. And I wonder if they can actually have kids because of yeah, that. Yeah, but that's not the reason why he's antisocial. He's antisocial because of the job that his father gave him. Yes. But, she, but he, he was always stoic. 
Yeah, but he's now softening a little bit, and not in a bad way. Mm, I'd rather well, see him hardening, big old that's fucking because Seminole you man. Are he is. A pervy Smurf. So mm, big ass why. Seminole man. Mm, nice long hair. You know, I can't even say shit. That I, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you about the the Samoan brother that Lily and I have a little crush on. <laughs> I actually had a crush on Samoan motherfucker. My entire school, well, not my entire school, but the entire one third of the football team was Samoan. As I live like as I mentioned before, I live in Chinatown, Vegas, and oddly enough, um, you'll see more commonly Filipinos and Samoans, and. There's this one who is just, he is so beautiful. He's about six foot six, six foot seven. Every time you see him walking down the street with the long hair just flowing behind him, he is smiling like he is happy to be alive and to be part of this universe. And every time Lily and I see him, we're just like, ha. The small women are nice, too, with the, uh, uh, she, I remember, like, uh, I, there was this chick at my school, and I was actually into both the guy and the chick. Well, this is just, just, just more than those they got. <laughs> but um she had like this weird sort of highlight thing that naturally happens with her hair and she had like curly hair and it was flowing and she was like kind of buffy but not kind of super buffy oh lord i know she genetically mean, blessed though. like they're i like you know my girl crushes all have like the interesting build where it's like a perfect balance between muscle and curve yeah, that's what she was, and she was fast too. Because we used to run again. They used to put us against us to like run, and she'd like run, and then I'd have to run and then keep up. And like if I didn't keep up, I get in truck of trouble. <laughs> so I was just like, ah, like you remember how Jenna Jackson used to be built like during her like, you know, when she was going through her sexing phase. <laughs> oh, are you talking about Rhythm Nation? After Rhythm Nation. When she, cause she wasn't really sexy during Rhythm Nation. She was still fighting herself. I'm talking yeah, about like at the end of Rhythm Nation when she did all the touring because of all the the fucking steps in Rhythm Nation. She was weirdly buff, but not buff. Yeah, it was like a little bit after that when she was bringing out her little sexy albums, uh, like anytime, anywhere. Uh, <laughs> See, you're stuck. See, okay, you need to fast forward five years, boo boo. No, no, I, I know what you're talking about. It. I just really love Rhythm Nation. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I see, feel you. I, I stopped loving Rhythm Nation when I realized that that hat was $400. And I was like, I could just got a baseball like hat and like just glued shit to it. What? It wasn't like a, it was like not a true baseball hat. It was like a, what do they call those hats? Why are we it stuck with these It hats? was like a leather snapback. Yeah, that, is that what it is? It was. Like, they're not called. Cute. They weren't called snapbacks back then, though. It was cute, though. It was cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I think what what Velvet what, Rope. That was. That's what the album was. Velvet, Velvet Rope. Rope. Yeah. Oh. I think what I liked the most about this series was I was um, the use of the world because. There's been like three compelling worlds in urban fantasy, at least in my opinion. This is just an opinion. Um, and you're not going to like it. You're not allowed to have an opinion. How <laughs> dare you? This is the, the internet. Hollows. The hollows. <laughs> and when I say compelling world, I mean a it's world where you feel like need. a world where you feel like the pieces are constantly moving elsewhere. Yeah. And when you stop looking, you know that whatever is going on is still going on and the battle begins where it doesn't have that pause. Then our character shows up and their world suddenly moves on. <laughs> um, and I would say that it's the hollows. Kim Harrison's the hollows. Then, but this is, this is the order from biggest to greatest. The hollows, um, this particular Mercy, Th Mercy Thompson world and Yelena Andrews, because, you know, we can't just, you know, leave her alone. And that's the Kate Daniels world. Yeah. And those are like the three urban fantasies that I feel actually could hold candle to a regular fantasy for world building. Because they have language, they have, they have, they have inside jokes inside their world. They have all the elements of world that what you I don't love, often see in urban fantasy or paranormal, especially paranormal romance. I love that there's a lot of 
I, I, well, okay. There, there is there is some pop culture in all three worlds, but it feels like even more so in Mercy Thompson's world, there's a lot of unexpected pop culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the I also love what I loved about all three of those worlds is that there is a portion of the world that is hidden. Yes, everything yeah. is not exposed, but most of it's exposed, and the 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 result of that exposure, uh, the the fact that that is, that culture is exposed, it creates like a, a subculture in the normal world of 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 human interaction. So it's almost believable that you know there probably is this freaking werewolf um, community, and we just walk past it like the Amish because we know nothing about the Amish unless you live in Amish country. Well, to explain it, it kind of feels like there's three layers. Okay, so you have. Mercy's lair, where with, with like her and Adam out and about in the in the world, people know who they are. Then you Almost have like a celebrity pops uh, uh, a reality star. Then like you have a, a second star. layer with Anna, who's kind of she's kind of in between, because she's she's kind of like a, a liaison. And, and then like you have X Files y sort of vibe. Yeah, they're not and meant then, to be famous. And then you have the third layer, which is Charles. Because that they may know who Charles is, but they don't know what Charles does. Think Hitman. Yeah. So it's like I'd say about three layers. Hitman, uh, body, hider. <laughs> it, 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 isn't that what he is? The he's a body the hider. He's a witch of the clan, <laughs> so he's a body hider. You know, I think, you know, that kind of thing. And where Mercy Thompson series has a kind of I'm gonna go to work and this this unfortunate series of calamitous events happens to me while I'm at work or while things are... This has an, a more of an x files feel to it. Yeah. Now, we always take the time to um, have a portion of the show <laughs> where we don't go under spoilers, and we're going to finish that out right now, but those spoilers are coming, bitches. You know, they're kind of more like... Uh, like... And the discussion will open up. They're, they're kind of more like a reverse bones, kind of. I would say between bones and X, because there's portions of it where they're dealing with people they didn't know existed. And I feel like that's where it's going. Like, I feel like the direction of this series is like an X Files y sort of bonesy, correct? Diagnosis kind of show. Show. I wish they would make the Mercy Thompson series a show because it actually work as a show. That it's would actually be cast. really <laughs> hilarious. I would yeah. love it. It's a multicultural <laughs> cast with a lot of different lore elements from around the world, and it would actually work as a, a a a series because you could go and you don't always have to stay with Mercy Thompson. You can go and jump over to this X Files League portion, and then they can meet in the middle sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Just saying, why don't they ever turn books I really like into fucking series? They always pick these sort of, you know, titty twister, teeny bopper bullshit. Yeah, because it's not YA. Like, that's why. It's not YA. It's if it like, was YA, oh, it'd be different. It's like, it's like, the, the, this, oh, you know, like, we're not going to fuck here. We're going to talk about fucking. We're well, not even talk about it. We're just going to take off our shirts and stand and look at you hard. Though they kind of twisted that shit with Vampire Diaries, because it was like Y A Y A Y A, boom, the originals. <laughs> <laughs> I the originals wish like, flipped the script. <laughs> I wish that Netflix or somebody like Netflix or like HBO, either Netflix or I don't want any other channels to get it because they always miss the shit up. And I'm now, I would think that, I would think that that Stars or Showtime could probably do it. Yeah, but you know the problem with stars or Showtime. What? It's stars and Showtime, and I want my shit. Yeah, but Comedy. American Gods is I not on know. HBO, and it's that's true. Good. That's true. Well, when they build out their shit, maybe they'll get Patricia Brink, or e even better, which I think the budget would technically be too high. Is Leona Andrews? Oh my goodness, that's a lot of work, and that's a lot of sets. They're gonna have to blow up Atlanta or something. That, but you know, the the another thing I like about this series is, um, I can't remember where's the location. Really? Yeah. What? They go the, between their their main home base is Montana. Yeah. But then they go out and about. 
the, no, the no, where's story. Mercy Thompson series? Located? Oh, she's in uh she's in Oregon. Yeah, right, I right, believe. Right, right, right. But what I like about this series is that you know I love series that don't take place in LA, New York. Or sometimes Vegas, but I don't think anybody's really written anything in Vegas that's actually, you know. Vegas-y. Nothing has stood out to me except for the one book series where it actually took place in my neighborhood. Oh, you mean the, the one with the, the, the... Trick of Light, I think is what the book was called. Dark and, yeah. night, Darkest Night, Dark Night. I had that. That's what... I was on the train, and I was on the train, and um, my, I was reading C.D. Rich's book. I told you about this in a moment, and that's what it switched to. It switched to that book. <laughs> and it was moaning even harder. Oh, wait, no, that one is not... Yeah, that one's not a dirty book. This one is actually an urban fantasy. Ashes, are you talking, so you're not talking about the Ashes series um, by D- The Dark and You by um, Suzanne? No, I'm not, Miss Pervy Smurf. See, Pervy Smurf. Pervy. You know, we... Pervy first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, like way. Yeah, Trick of Light Trickster Built by Rob Thurman. Mm. It takes place in Paradise, Las Vegas. Also the as the Asian just let's not let's not give your home address. <laughs> I'm not giving it's Las Vegas. Believe it or not, like you know, Princess Suburbia, it's actually a big fucking city. Uh, it, <laughs> no, I believe it's a big city. I didn't just go to one place. I didn't go to what is it, the strip? That's all anybody knows about Vegas is it's the strip. I didn't go like, to just the strip. I went from one end of the strip to the other. I've totally done all this series of Las Vegas. No. I'm like, really? This is no. like twenty three no. zip code boo boo. The way that I, I went as a couple times as a kid and a few times as an adult, we never, and be, due to my, my mother's habits of, of when she goes places, she goes places. So- <laughs> See, I, I've actually vacationed here a few times before. In fact, I even got married here before I actually lived here. Um, like, yeah, a lot of people keep thinking it's just like the strip. And like that's it, and it's just like no, no. There is so so much more. This city is actually pretty damn big. Yeah. So, in fact, if you really, if you want to ever piss off Raven, you, you, you can point out that there's only a uh, what was it a two hundred mile distance difference between the city of Las Vegas and her entire country. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, oh no, so, no! If I really want to be cold, I may, I point out the whole how uh, she's only her country's only been a first world nation against their own will for uh, the past <laughs> forty years or some shit. Sorry, no, I, no, it's I, okay. I make fun of Singapore. It's not that I don't love Singapore. I do love Singapore. It's just really really funny. To, so the one make- question I have for this series is: it worth tracking down the short story before you start reading it? Yes, yes, yes. I think it is. I, I actually really, really like the short story a lot. I, I I thought it was really good. I thought it was well written. I love the introduction. Yeah. Even without Mercy Thompson, even without the Mercy Thompson book, I would put this series still up there. What's even interesting? The universe didn't exist. What's interesting to me, um, though, is how Mercy is described in each book, because it's like in the in the first book. You know, the 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 men are are discussing her. You know, like the like the doofy little sister. You know, and the second book, it's like, oh, she's some some coyote. <laughs> and the third, which kind of felt a little shade there, <laughs> the way it was phrased. Wait, wait, who who described her as some coyote? Anna. It was it was like some coyote that that grew up with the pack. That's how she oh, was. Oh, like, because she was because her husband didn't really explain who she was. Yeah, but then, well, I don't. I'm not sure about that because in was it this book that I'm in now or the last book? One of the two where she's like she refers to Mercy as his foster sister. I wonder. So if it took this jealousy, many books it, it, for her to to say that. I wonder if that was jealousy and insecurity, and if that Maybe. was what how 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 deep that's actually a deep moment to have that progression and notice it so <laughs> well you also there's also a, a really funky little time progression too between yeah, each which book has to do with it's worth reading the alpha and omega series in order with the mercy thompson books yeah because if not you're gonna be like the fuck 
Because you have, I like, have, the short story takes place only a, a week or two after, like, the short story takes place only a week or two before the first book. Then the second book takes place only a few months later. Then no, the third the short book, story takes place concurrently with the first book. No, I'm but not, in I'm a shorter not, amount of time. I'm talking about the first book of the series. Yeah, it only takes place, like, within a few weeks. For it to take, so, like... You have, you know, the short story, blah, 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 blah. And then first book, she's moving to Montana, blah, 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 Montana. Yeah. Ping. Okay, well, let's start this again. Now, we are getting into the discussion geeky portion of this book. Yep. There will be spoilers. Point. Know that both of us love this series. It can be read independent, independently without you getting freaked out. Don't. But it's better. It's a better series if you read it concurrently with the... Um, with the uh, in reading order, which is available on Patricia Briggs' website, the reading order for these books. If you read it in the reading or or order, you will sit there just like yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, it's like all right. If those of you who, who listen to us, you you know that I crash read the entire Mercy Thompson series in like three weeks. <laughs> yeah. So like. You know, I actually took more time with, with this book, even read books in between it. I finished the October Day book just uh, just the other day, the new October Day book. But um, And the pacing but, and the character progression on this is actually better than it is in the Mercy Thompson series. I would say in the Mercy Thompson series, she didn't quite have her footing. When she executed this one, she is strategic, and it moves really well. Within well, with the Mercy Thompson series, uh, the one, there's, like, more books. But... I think I think you get a better, more of a better idea of how she grew as an author as you're reading through the Mercy Thompson book. Because the, the books are. get better, and and who the characters are, because it's a pretty damn big world. It's a big world, but there's fewer character counts. The character counts are much lower in these series, and it, that, it's more paranormal. I wouldn't actually. I want to rephrase that because uh, no, it's urban fantasy. Even though the couple is together, blah blah blah. And the tension is broken because they're doing it. Whatever. See, well, th I feel that this, like, the Alpha and Omega series, I find it to be, um, I find it to be more urban fantasy than par paranormal romance. Because, yes, it is a couple. But the center of the story isn't really the romance, but how they work together yeah. and, and resolve issues in the world that's around and, them. And how Anna finds her place in the world. Exactly. And yes, her place in there in the world and is how next Charles to him. Demons. But his place in the world is next to her because he wouldn't have been able to function as he is now without her. And that is to the point he's he probably would have been the dead by now. If, if if well, I don't think that his father would have slotted him into the role he was slotted into. I think he would have picked somebody else. But there there's fewer and fewer people that Brand can Where? pick for those types of roles. Yeah, but he would he would still have to do something with Charles. Because he slotted Charles for this role, you know, over a hundred years ago. Or and then the uh, role he's doing like the FBI liaison stuff and all I'm, this other I'm stuff. I'm talking about like the assassin part of it. You know, like, I'm talking about what he what the way Anna and 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 Sam, uh, um, I want to say Sam for some reason. Yeah, but, but like, this doesn't you you because the whole thing is that you're skipping a whole portion of the series. No, I'm because saying that this is the progression of. We were talking about what this story is about in in the, in the relationship terms, not just emotionally, but, but the also FBI emotionally. part of it doesn't even happen until book three. Yes, but what I'm saying is that what happens is she's finding her place in the world which is next to him and what he doesn't realize that her, her that she's more than an emotional link emotional you know she's my mate ho, 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 ho. you know link that he she she actually has a place to him for him next to her as a working relationship as well which well is i'm saying and that isn't that discovered until throughout the books i'm just saying if she didn't exist in his life by now it, like he probably would have been dead by now if she didn't exist in his life because but he was what, already he losing it but he was yeah he was I flipping didn't that. they were showing evidence of him slipping in like book two. Oh, I I, I I didn't I didn't even notice I was just so down <laughs> <laughs> to be honest I was just I was just too down with 
listen. Oh my he, God. Could, he couldn't handle his demons. He couldn't handle, you know, the ghosts of the people that he was assassinating and shit. Ah. So, I just thought he was going to power through. Yeah, he could have ended up snapping out or the ghost could have taken over. Or things could have been just ten times worse than, than they actually were. Ah. Ah. I actually get what you're saying. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I don't disagree, actually. Okay. I do not disagree with that assessment after the fact. Okay. Now, <laughs> no, no, I don't disagree. I, I see what you're saying, but what I'm saying still holds to the point is that the evolution between the two relationships, not just physically and emotionally, but also also a work relationship and she actually isn't just some pussy he's bringing <laughs> along for these for this you know his normal job he she actually has a place things to do you know she isn't just arm candy i like it that isn't, brand it isn't gives just, her a purpose yeah it isn't just when it comes to her and him it's when she, it comes to her and the overall world because as news spreads that they have found an omega for um for Americas, because they didn't have one in Americas is what I think, correct? Yeah. They had one somewhere else, but I think that Omega is hidden. Do people, I, I'm kind of waiting for the portion where people are going to start trying to start stealing the her. Only, well, there, there was another Omega, but the, he wasn't technically an American Omega. Yes. No, no, there was two Omegas. One was a man, one was a man, and then there's another Omega that, that was, um, the dude's wife, a seal's wife. Yeah, I, but I they, she, they weren't American. She yeah, but both weren't American. Five hundred years ago. Or yeah. But um, the the Amer the other Omega that was in North America wasn't technically a North American Omega. He was a no. European Omega. And that was the man, and he was just passing through. You right? actually meet him in the most recent Mercy Thompson book. Is he an Omega? Yes. I thought he was just an extremely submissive wolf. No, yeah, he's a, he's actually an omega, but they're hiding that he's an omega. At I least that's what I got it. from it. I could be wrong. As I said, post in the comments. Like, I could be wrong. I thought he was I just an extremely an submissive omega. wolf that was from another pack. You know, it could be that he might not even know he's an omega, too. And Bran is hiding that from him, because Bran has a habit of hiding shit from him. He's a wolf. sneaky fucker, isn't he? Yes. And yet I like him more that and more. The one legged wolf story thing, I am just salivating over it. <laughs> like I from what I get from what I got from from between reading both of the series, I believe that I believe his name was Zach. I believe that Zach is an Omega. But I could be wrong, as I said before. But, but he, I think I would Omega's explain why I, I would, it would explain why why Bram made a purpose to kidnap him. I think that Omegas might have different power levels too. Which See, we haven't I think that, in. Well, I think what it is, I think what it is is that as it's mentioned multiple times before, a lot of packs can't tell a difference between an omega and a submissive. Because omegas it, technically aren't submissives. But it feels like Anna actually reeks of it. So I wonder if there's different power levels between omegas. Some are just omega a little bit, but still fit into the mega and then some people reek with power in the same See, way Brand i don't think it's that deep i just think that it's just a trained omega and an untrained omega and because, because a lot she of was packs reeking with power know, before she was even trained well i think it, because a lot of packs don't know what an omega is and they think that's just a submissive because they don't feel the dominance from them that the omega is just put in the position of a submissive and is just never trained Mm. Like well, that'd be, that'd be a thing that we're going to have to see because this is the Alpha and Omega series. We're probably going to find that fucking shit out. <laughs> Eventually. I, I, I wonder how long she's going to go with this series because I hope it does make it a couple books in because there's there's a lot of questions I, I want to know. I am too fucking attached. So... There's a lot of questions I want to know. And I just like to say, Yona Andrews, can you hear me? <laughs> it's the cover artist for this bitch. <laughs> Well, see, here's the thing, though. I have some problems with these covers. <laughs> yes, but it's not a fucking wandering nipple, now, is it? Is it a wandering no, but nipple? fair game. I'm not sure what she, like, is that supposed to be her? Or is that supposed to be Charles? And she's a little dark to be her. And I don't think Charles is a crossdresser for fair game. <laughs> for fair that game. cover is terrible. 
Fair game is just her. And, oh, yeah, it's a it's a really masculine <laughs> gen, though. You're right. <laughs> I got nothing against it though, but it, at least it's not a wandering nipple. Like, do you remember that nipple cover? And also, she has gold eyes, except that when her wolf is showing, she has ice blue eyes. And that's another thing I want to mention to you too. Mm-hmm. Um. Does, is it just, like, I notice a lot when they mention, like, when Adam is angry, his eyes turn amber. Same thing with, with Charles, and eventually with a few others. Is, are, are, the, are the colors of their wolf's eyes show their position, whether or not they're dominant or submissive? Oh, I don't think so. I just think it's just part, particularly with, uh, with, uh, with his family. It might show family trait as well. And because yeah, so his, Adam's his not related to them, and Adam has the same color, has the same eye color. Oh. He's a, her as wolf. Perhaps it shows dominance. I didn't notice it as dominance. I thought it was just like a part of me thinks that Adam might have a portion of his blood be witch blood. I don't know if it's the Russian thing. That's I possible. Just, he does have a close relationship with that one witch. I don't. You know, it would be funny if me, like the more I look at it, I'm just like it's kind of like a dude with lips. Like you know who she looks like? Um, she looks like um, a homie from Crying Game. <laughs> On this cover. You wanna know what though? The 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 two top first cover with the hard boobs because those look like really hard boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna butcher coverage, y'all. Like y'all. Just, but here's you know, the, thing. Is, the here's thing. the thing. I would like, rather. I would rather see a hard boob first cover that is overall really well laid out than whatever bullshit Iona Andrews is getting on her covers with her fucking multi, you know, whatever sales. And yet she can't still get a cover yet. You know, Patricia Biggers, Briggins has been rocking amazing covers since, you know, uh, Mercy Thompson in well, 2005. You can tell that whoever did the cover for Fair Game didn't read the book because they couldn't tell if they were making a native girl or a white girl. True. <laughs> True. True. And it's the same artist for the second cover because you can tell by the nose. Like, okay. I, I think it's the same. You know what? The, you know what they're doing. And what I do sometimes, I don't think they're free drawing the actual chick. I think what they're doing is they're dropping her down to black and white, and then drawing over the per the the person, and then so the model changed. Yeah, it's and Charles is a lot that. shorter, or she's wearing some serious fierce ass heels out for the cover of Dead Heat. Because I think the <laughs> hard move model in the first one, I I excuse. Listen, I know that objectifying women is wrong, but it's hard to hard to describe the covers without it. The, the tube top hard boob chick and the first one, I would rather <laughs> have the cat because I like her her face. But you know, I like her face. Okay, if they changed her face, if they cut her face, made her hair a little bit more more red, and 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 maybe like uh, paled out that skin a bit, like maybe just maybe it could do better than the other covers. The other covers yeah. are killing me. I don't mind the <laughs> Dead Heat cover, though. My problem with the Dead Heat cover is Charles is a hell of a lot shorter than he should be. True. <laughs> and he doesn't have the broad enough shoulders that you think he has. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Like, like she's supposed but, to be, like, like, a little, like, barely over five foot, and he's supposed to be, like, six, like, five and shit. So, but, like, but she's supposed to, like, a, be able to give a blowjob without bending over. Yeah, but as a piece of art. <laughs> Work, it's actually a beautiful cover. <laughs> yes, it is beautiful, but I I just it's expect cover not, art to go with the goddamn book. I know I might be expecting too much, but <laughs> uh, cover artists don't read. <laughs> <laughs> don't you know anything? <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh god, we're fucking terrible. Okay, now that we're done being awful human beings, I want to say this has been like one of the best series, hands down. And if you haven't already read this series, you should read it. Is there anything else that you can think of that we oh. haven't gone over? God, there is. There are tons of questions. You know, though, I do like some of the additional characters they brought in, like Leslie. I really like Leslie. Mm-hmm. You know, they they, you know, they they brought in a strong black woman. Mm-hmm. 
and, and she ain't loud, FBI guy. And, and she's not loud, and she ain't trying to get up in your business or in your face. <laughs> creepy ass and, FBI guy, I don't mind either. The yeah. not the first creepy ass FBI, the one that's like <laughs> somebody normally FBI her partner. <laughs> yeah, her partner is, is funny. Um, also, uh, one of the one of the can trap guys leads who you see often in a uh, Dead Heat. He amuses the hell out of me too, because he has that little that little geek factor that we have. When it's like, oh, did you see this? Do you see how this this is connected? Oh my god, this and this and this. I like that. <laughs> One of the things I like about both the Mercy Thompson series and the uh, um, Alpha and Omega series is that the, the story of Cantrip and how they actually have filled it with people who are a counter what its actual goals are because they haven't made clear what the control of Cantrip was. It's like. And in so doing, they've set Cantrip up for constant failure and being fucking useless. But you know what I, what I kind of like about them at the same time, though, is that they you know they did flush them out a bit more. Unlike a certain unnamed government agency in a certain author's series about a witch with a magical vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, just, no, 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 no. I would say that that that, that ISS. I would say that I would say ISS and um, FIB. Well, FIB, they they spoke a lot about, but yeah, I think it was the ISS. Yes, yeah, the one, like, and then they had they ended the series with 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 what you call it joining it, and I kind of wish that they had it. You know, the worst part is about the Hollows is I kind of wish they started the book then instead of and where it's they like, started. He it. joined, and boom, that's it. Like yeah, else. Al, Al on the human side is a story on top of itself. And, yeah, and in the inside workings of the IS is a story onto itself. Al you could be his own series, like for real. Al and his shenanigans that could be a series by itself. The whole entire, the whole entire demon world is now on Earth. We never got to see what fucking the uh the we never got to see what the uh what's called the the the, the new um, ever after looks like so we don't know if it's beautiful so it is a new ever after she made does it look like the old ever after did before the war see that's a good question but that's for another series let's get back to the, the one we actually care about right now <laughs> it's like ah oh, talk about not Taking care of your shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kendra, Kendra definitely, is, 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 and and you know what I like about them is that I think you know aside from the Fae, aside from the vampires, they really are going to be the biggest big bad because, like, they just they stick their face in everything. And also, <laughs> there's so many people in Cantrip who are purposely there to terrorize. Yes. And it's the type of people who would be terrorizing anybody who is of the other. And, and I like that story being told in a non-threatening way for people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But it, it's, it's very much like they're there to terrorize the other. They're getting taxpayer money. And they're not actually on top. Most of the time, they're not even on, on point. You know what I'm saying? They're just out there hot-dogging. And I think that that's, that's an interesting commentary on on many topics that are relevant i, I almost get i almost get a, a a you know a kind of um border security border you know border patrol sort of just a bunch of dudes out there hot dogging just getting more and more money you know Oh, wait, I was just reading uh, Patricia Biggs, uh, the, fact pay, the fact on her website, and this is hilarious. One of the questions is, can I take you out for a drink and meet you in person? The answer is, writing is a solitary business, and most writers like it that way. Believe it or not, they're usually shy, and Patty is no exception. She very much appreciates the invitation, but she much prefers to hide in her office and in her imaginary wor world and torture her imaginary characters in ways that would get her tossed into jail in the real world. So really, she's doing you a favor by not, by not taking you up on your offer. And it's, it's hilarious. I love that. I love seeing writers with humor about themselves. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Ah. So, Alpha and Omega series is a must-read. It's actually both the whole entire... Um, world of Mercy Thompson is with the exception of River Deep. <laughs> River River Mark, excuse me. Uh is a must read audiobook read. If you have a series that 
if you are not sure you're into audiobooks, Mercy Thompson series or any Iona Andrews with the exception of Edge. <laughs> I think, you know, Audible should sponsor us. I'm just saying. It's like, well worth you going to your public library, getting your card current, and getting you a free books. Yeah, because they have, have the audio. Money, hit up Audible. They they they're pretty awesome. Yeah, you can listen to yeah. your stuff like anywhere. Yeah. But um, but yeah, like I I do a lot of audiobooks because I multitask like a mofo, like all the time. So like for instance, I I homeschool. And uh, when uh, Senorita Cosa is working on her uh, whatever at that moment, like her whatever schoolwork she's doing, like in between lessons, I'm, I'm listening to an audiobook and playing games on my phone. <laughs> there you go. Or, or uh, before we started recording, I was doing her kind of flashcards. There you go. Listening to Dead Heat. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Get back to Dead Heat. I'm a, I, I might actually go ahead and I, I'm supposed to read October Day, and I kind of just want to read Alpha See, to make it. You just want an excuse to get out of reading October Day. It's it's that first book, and I think I might just skip the first book. Do that, but but read it still. And like the new book, I really really liked a lot. Like I, I feel that 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 uh Shannon. Well, I I want to keep saying Sheehan, but Sean and uh, McGuire has became has become a really, 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 really like they're already a really good author. But is it two people? Writing has gotten so much better. Is it two I, people writing? It's like... only it's one person, but I don't trust author pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so very well could be male or female, or a very talented editor or something. Is there it? is. I just think that the writing has gotten so much better. I think that it's like they've always been really good at evoking emotion, at least with the October Day series, with the encrypted series. I, I really couldn't stand them, but um, I couldn't stand the right. Not that I couldn't stand the writer, I couldn't stand the books. But with the October series, I, I believe they became better with with evoking emotion from you, and and not in like a horrible, oh my god, I hate you, you just abused me kind of way, like Kim Harrison does, but um, but an actual like genuine like genuine feels from from these series so i i do recommend it i'm sorry i can't help it i feel traumatized by reading the hollows no worries i'm i'm burning <laughs> my way through october day bit by bit i i read 10 minutes yesterday day before yesterday in between cd reese i know that there's a new cd reese book, book and i and we have our undercover sister who re, who listens to the show and that's the that's the mature book we're reading next is uh, is C.D. Reese. I'm trying to make it through the book. Uh, it's on be... my list. I I still need to get through finish the the last half of the last Chronicles of Nick book plus the re most recent Chronicles of Nick book. After I finish Dead Heat, I actually was supposed to read all of this other stuff before Dead Heat, but I I finished Fair Game and I was just like, I need more. <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> Does he have a car? But um. But so after Dead Heat, it's finishing the last Chronicles of Nick's book and reading the most recent Chronicles of Nick book. And then I will get to C.D. Reese. Yes. So give me like two weeks. C.D. Reese for almost every <laughs> single book. At, you may not like the main character, but you're always willing to take her on the ride. I do have a problem with this current one that I'm reading, but I'm fighting my way through. I'm also reading um, Laura Lee. I've been trying to read her for our paranormal series that I wanted to do. In addition to this one, we have a playlist for all these, you know, well, books. You know, we still haven't even talked about Bombshell. And we really do need to get to Bombshell. You know what? Why don't we talk about Bombshell next time instead of this new one? That would be actually a good idea. Let's talk about because Bombshell. Bombshell, I felt like I really felt. Did, really did your undercover sister read it? But I, don't, I don't know. I did not ask her. I will ask her. You tell her to read Bombshell. And then by the time we get back next week, we'll have the thing for Bombshell. Because Bombshell, my cover sister might actually like Bombshell. Bombshell was really good. I liked it a lot, actually. And it has that sort of contemporary with good sex scene sort of feel. Swing, swing, Wait, swing. You want to hear something twisted? You know, when I I was listening to the audiobook for Bombshell, is what I was playing for Sona Five at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> It's such yes, I listen to audiobooks while gaming too. Yes, yes, I do. I don't get that uh, three times. So I gotta double up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, say uh, more, more DPS. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, I cannot. I have to listen to music when I'm hard. If it's like a major raid, I have to listen to music. And 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 believe it or not, my my play my music playlist is mostly consists of uh, Usher. I know, weird, right? And uh, Collision Course, uh, Jay Z, and uh, Lincoln Park. Mm. But, I know, weird mixture. But when it comes to like just general, like Kelly. oh god, no. <laughs> but uh, for but for general general gaming, especially if it's a single player, like. I'll, I'll listen to whatever audio book I have queued up because as I said before, I don't have that a whole lot of free time. So I got to double up. <laughs> All right. Oh, and we'll have for um, next week ending on our show, we also have a discussion item that we have to do, and we'll probably do that as a tidbit show. So thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't already, read the book, get the audio book, or read the regular book. It's It goes either way, but... It's better as an audiobook, to be honest. Like, you know, it's very. Both. Walter Graham is a really, really great voice actor. If you have ever been a fan of any of the Charlene Kenyon books, he does a lot of her books too, and he's he's really, really good and really, really versatile. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. So you keep on reading, because we love reading. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fucking angry. All right. Goodbye. Thank you for joining. Bye, everybody. Let me hit the stop button. Boo.